you've gotten things wrong. Wait, are you gonna do a correction segment? I've always wanted to do one of those. Well, let's see how you like it. Exhibit A, Adam ruins forensic science. You claimed that DNA was the only foolproof type of evidence. Killer's DNA is all over this crime scene. We'll know for certain who killed this man. But according to new research, DNA evidence can suffer from the same problems as other forensic science, such as incomplete samples and crime scene contamination. Achoo! My bad. When German police found matching DNA at 40 different crime scenes, they concluded it was a serial killer called the Phantom of Heilbronn. Mein Gott. 40 crimes, 40 cotton swabs with the same DNA, but a ruthless killer. It turned out that matching DNA was actually from a woman at the factory that made the cotton swabs. This will make it clean for my nice police officers. So face it, DNA evidence isn't foolproof. You're ruined. Wow. Thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> it's true. Since that episode aired, we have learned that DNA evidence is not infallible. And even though it's still an amazing tool, we need to use it carefully and think about it critically. What? Hey, bud, so all this is on camera. So you shouldn't be so happy about being wrong because people think that you don't care about the facts. Oh, I really care about the facts. That's why I'm excited for this. <laughs> Hit me with another one. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this one's a doozy. <clears throat> you specifically said that air marshals stop terrorist attacks. That just ain't true. Between 2001 and 2008, air marshals didn't make one arrest related to terrorism. Ugh, why are there never any terrorists to shoot? I'm bored. The few arrests they do make are drunk people and celebrities who won't get off their phones. Aha, gotcha. And we're paying through the nose for it. Taxpayers spent $800 million on air marshals in 2014 alone. And since they only make around four arrests per year, that's about $200 million per arrest. Air marshals are so ineffective, one member of Congress has even called for the program to be abolished. Wow, yep, sounds like we were definitely wrong on that one. Adam. Hey, man, be cool. This is a steady gig. Don't go ruining your credibility by admitting mistakes. Oh, no, that'll just increase our credibility. Hit me with another one, Emily. Sure about that? OK. <clears throat> Remember that segment on electric cars? Whew, people did not like that one. Adam, you know I love you like a weird friend of my wife. But you were wrong, 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 wrong when you said that no one should ever buy a Tesla. Elon Musk is a super brainiac, and Teslas are totally saving the planet. Tesla! So stop taking money from big oil and do a little something called research. Babe, what are you doing? Oh, looking at naked photos. Please subscribe. Okay, I know Tesla fans didn't love that one, but our argument was actually more nuanced than that. First of all, our source wasn't the oil industry, it was scientists and environmental groups, and their data shows that in some cases, buying a brand new electric car can actually increase your carbon footprint. But that doesn't mean that no one should ever buy one. In fact, our expert in that episode said the opposite. If you really want to help save the environment, the best thing you can do is to reduce the amount you drive and to drive your current car as long as possible, provided it's reasonably efficient. But if your car is beyond repair and you absolutely need to buy a new one, then go ahead, buy yourself a nice small electric car, perhaps even a used one. Look, we don't hate electric cars. Our goal was to show how even green products affect our carbon footprints. In this case, our facts weren't wrong. Our point was just misunderstood. Ah, but since it's your show, that's on you. You should have been clearer. I mean, the title of the video was Adam Ruins Electric Cars. Do you wonder why people got the wrong idea? Yeah, you're right. If that many people misread our argument, that means we should have done a better job explaining it. Doing nuance on TV is hard, but that's my job, so in the future, I'll try to be better. Okay, have you ever actually seen your own show? Because you're supposed to be getting upset. That's how everyone knows I'm doing a good ruin. One minute till act break. Ooh, lightning round. In a Never Wonder Why segment, you said the Empire State Building was 12,000 feet tall. Oh, yeah, that one was really embarrassing. It's actually a little over 1,200 feet tall. I guess we added a zero somehow. In Adam Ruins Football, you referred to a lineman, but pointed at a linebacker. I still can't tell the difference. Don't let him get to you, Todd. And one time, you showed snowflakes that have eight sides, but they almost always have six. Sorry, Jorge. 
So there you have it, Adam. I have proved that your show makes mistakes. Okay, why aren't you storming off? I mean, I'm starting to feel like you don't like my present. No, of course I do. Because you're right, we have gotten a few things wrong, but that doesn't ruin our show at all. Look, this is our research team. They spend every day calling experts, combing through sources, and fact-checking scripts to ensure that the information we present on this show is as close to the truth as possible. But they're also human, and humans sometimes make mistakes. But this entire show is predicated on you being truthful and honest. Right, and it wouldn't be truthful to claim we are infallible. The intellectually honest thing to do is to be transparent about our process and public about our mistakes. That's why we put our sources on screen and why we admit when we can do better. The point of our show isn't to be right every time. It's to encourage the audience to question what they think they know and, if we're lucky, to change a few minds. Hey, Adam here. If you like that, be sure to watch all new episodes of Adam Ruins Everything every Tuesday at 10 on True TV.